Hello all, welcome to Group Work 1 of the DAX Power Pivot and Data Analysis course. In this lecture, I want to give you an overview of how we get the data into the Power Pivot data model window. Now, we'll see that we have many options, but in this course, we're focusing mainly on importing data from a Microsoft Access database, as well as existing Excel worksheets. So let's have a look at the objectives for Group Work 1. So our first objective is to import external data into the Power Pivot data model window. Now during that process, we'll see that we've got an option to remove or filter data before we actually load it into the data model window. So at that stage, We've selected, we've filtered the data that we want into the data model window, and then we decide we've maybe made a mistake or we've changed our mind and we want to go back. We either want to remove some data or we want to add some more data into that data model window. So in group work one, that's what we're going to have a look at. That's our objectives. So let's roll up our sleeves and get started. I'll see you in the next lecture. Hello everyone, we're going to be starting with group work one. So hopefully you've downloaded the exercise files and if you've got the PDF open, I'm just going to start at group work one, which is on page eight and we'll be creating the data model. We're going to open the sales report file. So this is going to vary depending on where you guys have actually loaded it. So I have put it in the Power Pivot and DAX and here we go, here's the sales report. So there's only two Excel files. You should be seeing regional managers, which we'll be having a look at a bit later on. But the bulk of our work is going to concentrate on the sales report. So let's just click on open and you might get an enable editing message just here. So just click on that. And you've only got two sheets. You've got Group Work 3, GW3, and then the Practice Exercise 3. Again, we'll have a look at that in just a second. So here we go, guys. You'll see that I've got Power Pivot open. If if you haven't got that enabled just yet, then very, very quickly, guys, you're just going to go to File, go down to Options, then go to Add-ins. And then just down here on Manage, you're going to click on the, the drop-down and go to Comms and click on Go. I've got Power Map and Power View selected. You don't have to have that just yet. Um, what you do have to have is this selected, the Power Pivot for Excel, and just click on OK, and that enables the Power Pivot tab. So just to be clear, down here on my taskbar, we've only got one instance of Excel open. It's the sales report, and I point that out for this reason. When we click on the Manage button, on the Power Pivot tab, it launches the data model. Now, it always takes about 10, 20 seconds for that to load for the first time. And it looks as if it's just stalled. I'm clicking it again, and that's it, it's open, okay? Now, mine has opened um, in full screen. And so therefore, I can see from database in the Get External. Now, if I click on that, that's what it looks like. However, sometimes it opens like this and it doesn't look quite the same as mine just did on the screen there. And you have to click Get External Data. It's now collapsed, the Get External um, group itself. And then you come down to Database and then that's where you'd import your data from Access. So depending on how your data model window has opened, Okay, that might look a little bit different. So just expand it and you'll see that the Get External Data Group has expanded in full. So let's just take a couple of moments. We've got three menus here. We've got the Home, the Design tab and the Advanced. Now, if you don't have Advanced, it's because if you click on the File menu, or the File tab, I should say, switch to Normal View. If you click on that, it takes away the advanced menu. If you want to reveal it, you go to the file tab again, switch to advanced mode, click on that and it, and it reveals. It's no big shakes either way guys, because we're not really gonna be looking 
too much at the advanced tab there's not a lot of options in there that we'll be going through during this course we're going to concentrate our efforts on the home tab and the design tab the home tab divided up into these groups so we've got clipboard get external data formatting and so it goes on there are two windows now open for this workbook that we opened I go down to my task bar again we've now got two windows we've got the sales report window and we've got the data model the power pivot data model window now these two are saved together they're not separate if I close sales report then the power pivot window will close with it it is attached permanently to the workbook that you opened it up in okay so if I click on sales report two ways to get to the data model from the power pivot tab you just click on manage again and there it is if I want to go back to Excel I can click on that little icon there switch to workbook and it takes me back to the sales report window okay so to go back to the power pivot data model window so either way you're switching backwards and forwards between either the icon at the top there to get back to the Excel window or the manage button on the power pivot tab to get back to the data model window or your choice guys you just alternate between the two icons on the taskbar it's your choice so this is the data model window completely empty at the moment and our task now is to get some data into the data model so on the home tab we'll have a look at the options from get external data from the database drop down we've got from SQL server from access or from analysis services or power pivot SQL server as the name suggests you would just connect to a SQL server there we go you'd enter your server name use authentication if you have a username and password for that so you can save my password as well in the little tick box for convenience for later on and then provide a database name advanced settings self-explanatory there for those of you that use SQL I'll just cancel out of that and you can test the connection as well to make sure that the credentials that you add in here are actually correct so I'm just going to cancel out of that it would be exactly the same for analysis services this is really for SharePoint so if your existing power pivot workbook is hosted on a SharePoint server then you would just enter the name here provide credentials if you need to authenticate the database name you can test the connection to make sure that the, the credentials you've input are correct and it would be exactly the same for access all these windows look very very similar so regardless of whether you're importing data from SQL or from SharePoint it looks very very similar moving along from data services then we've got Azure Marketplace uh, that's going to be discontinued from March 2017 OData is online data and I primarily see this being used for online surveys so if your company are um, sending out online surveys to customers then you can collate that that information from online the O is just online from other sources a lot of the options that we've already seen are just replicated here so from SQL you can go to access Oracle and there's quite a few other sources here that you can connect to to bring data into your data model and curiously right at the very bottom of connect to data source this is where you'd import from an existing Excel workbook and then the text file is for CSV files okay now we're going to be having a look at how to import from existing Excel files a little bit later on in the course but for the time being we'll just cancel out of here and we'll have a look at existing connections a little bit later on but we are importing from an access database so it's access the friendly name database name we're going to browse for it and my files are contained in my documents folder under the power pivot and dax folder at the moment it's just showing one file which is access now i don't have access on my laptop so it's just showing this blank icon if we click on all files we can see our sales report region managers and the user guide here 
Okay, so it's just the file that you downloaded in the resources. So it's the AdventureWorks Access Database that we're going to be using. I'm just going to click on Open. So we've got our path. We don't have to enter a username or password. Again, there's some advanced settings there. We can test the connection. I can show you that now. So the test connection has succeeded. So we've got no problem accessing the data. Next thing we're going to do is click on Next. It's an access database, so there's bound to be lots of tables, perhaps even queries in that access database. And this new window asks us, do you want to select from a list of tables and views to choose the data to import, or would you prefer to write a query that will specify the data to import? So for all of you access whiz kids out there, you can connect to the access database and, and create a query from this point. Um, if you so choose. Um, for our purposes, we're going to accept the default selection and we're going to click on Next. And here is a list of all the tables and all queries that we have that are in that AdventureWorks Access database. Now I'm currently on page 10 of the user guide if you're following along and we're at the selecting tables to import part. The table import wizard displays and for this exercise we're going to select some queries that I've already created. Queries are at the bottom they've got this icon but what I've done is created some queries that are based on these tables so that we don't have to filter out too much data. I'm going to select the customers table, the products table and the sales tables to import into the data model. So guys, I'm going to leave it there for this video lecture. We've had a look at how we can select the tables in this example from the Access database. Next up, we'll have a look at how we can preview and filter.